the common ion effect. So far we've explored reactions where we have just one substance at the beginning, such as acetic acid in the solution. And we can write a problem just like that, where we'd have 0.1 molar of this, and then none of the conjugate base in the solution. And just for review, let's do that problem very quickly before we discuss what happens if we add this in as well to the solution. So if you recall, we have 0 0.1 molar of acetic acid, and we don't have any of these in the solution to start with. Then we'll add X amount in both cases. We'll use up X amount of this. And this is our ice table, right? So zero plus X equals X. Same there. And 0.1 minus X equals 0.1 minus X. And then we plug that into our Ka expression. And here's the Ka value. And our Ka expression is concentration of the acetate ion times concentration of the hydronium ion divided by the acetic acid concentration. And again, we leave off water because that's the solvent. And in that case, this is a liquid, so that doesn't go in. So since this is review, we'll go through this fairly quickly. Now, we look at this and we realize that this would be a quadratic equation if we wanted to solve it, but Fortunately for us, the K is fairly small and our concentration is large enough that we can ignore this little minus X right here. Because that X is going to be small and it's really not going to affect our denominator that much. This will vastly simplify solving this problem. So if we simply uh, plug in our Ka and multiply 0.1 by both sides, we should get this. And if we take the square root, uh, we'll get x equal to uh, 0 0.0013266. And since we had a weak acid in the beginning, this x is the concentration of H plus. So we can simply take the negative log of this if we want to know the pH, and let's do that. Uh, in that case, pH would equal uh, 2.88. This problem should be familiar to us. Now, let's see what happens if we add in a common ion. And that just means that we have another ion in the solution that is involved in the equilibrium. And in this case, our common ion will be the acetate ion. So what if I, instead of just starting with 0.1 molar acetic acid, I also had 0.1 molar sodium acetate in the solution? Well, that will change my initial condition on the ice table. I'm going to write that just down here using the same reaction. We'll just write our another ice table right here. So these are now our initial conditions. And we'll fill in the rest of the ice table the same as we did up here. We've got minus X over here. We have plus X and plus there.
Now in this case we have 0.1 plus x, so that's what I've written there. And here we still have 0 0.1 minus x. Now if we put this in our Ka expression, we'll have our acetate ion times our hydronium ion divided by the acetic acid concentration. And so let's just plug those in and see what happens to our Ka. All right, this right here. Okay, now at first glance, this might look like it's more complicated than what we have up here, right? There's, it's, it's not an X squared on top or anything. There's more information up here, but don't panic. This is actually quite simple because just like here, our X is probably going to be small. And in fact, let's think back to Le Chatelier's principle and let's consider what should be happening, right? In the beginning here, when I don't have any products, I'll have an equilibrium and it will go towards products and it will make some of these. And indeed, we calculated that it makes a little bit. But now, what happens if I were to add some of this into the solution? Well, Le Chatelier's principle would say that this equilibrium would shift back towards the reactants sum. So, if that's the case, we should expect that down here, since I've added in some product, that this x is going to be even smaller than the one that we calculated up here, because it won't be able to make as much of it we add some of this in, it's going to shift back that way. So in this case, we could ignore the minus x right here. But that's not the only place we could ignore it. There's also a plus x right up here. It's 0.1 plus x, 0.1 minus x. Well, this right here is small. Well, this is also small, it's still x, and it's small in relation to 0.1, so we can also ignore this. So when we go to solve this, we can actually simplify it down quite a bit. We can just ignore the x's in right here. And you'll notice that now our point ones will cancel and we'll just be left with X equals 1.76 times 10 to the minus five, even simpler to calculate. Although it might not have seemed that way at, at the beginning and indeed similar to above X is our hydronium ion concentration. So if we want to know what the pH of this solution is, we can simply take the negative log of this. And I got 4.75. Now, it should make sense that this pH is higher than up here because in this solution, I've added base to the, um, the mixture. And that should raise the pH because bases have a higher pH. So this is just a little bit about the common ion effect. This isn't the only place it comes up, but it is one of the places it comes up. And it leads us into our next discussion on buffers.